Hi, my name is Deepak Chopra. I'm going to answer a few questions about meditation from those who have never tried to lifelong practitioners. These are the voices of Audible. My question is, I have some very religious friends who seem to be quite confused as to the difference between meditation and prayer. I was wondering if you could explain the two. Thank you. Meditation and prayer come from the same spiritual traditions all over the world. So prayer is introducing an intention and directing it to a higher consciousness or the divine in you. And meditation is being still and listening to the voice of the divine in you. If you're familiar with the biblical injunction, be still and know that I am God, that is meditation. And of course, the Lord's prayer is prayer. They go together. How do I overcome the fear of going to personal and unknown spaces while meditating? The only way to overcome fear is to go through the fear. In this case, the way is through the fire, not around the fire. So as your inner demons and fears come out, in the beginning, you might feel even more fearful, but as you proceed, you will encounter a domain of awareness where you will be eternally free from fear. I've been meditating for about a month, but don't really see a difference. Am I doing something wrong? You can never do anything wrong in meditation if you understand that doing the meditation is the only thing that's required. If you're spending 10 to 15 or even 20 minutes doing the meditation, then you're doing it right. Doing it right means spending the time and focusing on the process and not the results. So it's like studying for an exam. If you focus only on the results, you can't study. But if you focus on the study, then you get the results. So my friend, don't worry about the results. Just spend the time and then you're doing it right. Hi Deepak, my name is Nene and my question is, are many meditation sessions, such as when I'm stuck in traffic or if I'm on my lunch break, are those as effective as just one long meditation session? Mini meditations can be even more effective than long meditations. Long meditations build up resiliency and stillness over the long term. Mini meditations can take you out of the stress mode instantly. However, if you're stuck in a traffic jam, don't close your eyes. Um, meditate with eyes open, watching the breath or feeling the body. But yes, mini meditations can be very effective in minimizing stress in real time. Most scientific studies show that 20 minutes of meditation twice a day is ideal. But if you can't afford 25 minutes in your time, then you probably need to do it even more because you're really stressed. I usually do an anxiety meditation in the morning and I still have worry thoughts that pop into my head. I want to accept them and detach from them without trying to force them out. But really, how do I do that? As you continue your practice of meditation, the worry thoughts will, of course, decrease. But here's one thing you can do. Whenever you meditate, use some incense or a fragrance that you like so that you associate the fragrance with the meditation experience. During the day, if you have any worry thoughts, just take a little bit of the fragrance and put it next to your nose and it will remind you and anchor you to the quiet, peaceful experience of meditation. Try it. What are the pros and cons of practicing meditation as social or family activity as opposed to in solitude? The pro practicing meditation as a family or as a group are enormous and outweigh any single meditation by oneself. And the reason is when people meditate together, their brain waves coordinate, synchronize. And from all that I've known from the past, there's a field, a consciousness field created as a result of group meditation. So group meditation is always more effective than solitude or doing it by yourself 
although that has other advantages too. When you're totally in solitude, you feel connected with the whole world. So solitude is not the same thing as loneliness. Both types are encouraged, both alone and in groups, but groups are definitely more effective. How can I achieve deep meditation at any time? You can restore the meditative state anytime, anywhere by using what I call the STOP formula. It's an acronym, S-T-O-P. S stands for stop. T, take three deep breaths and smile from your head to your toes. O, observe your breath. And P, proceed with awareness and compassion. Try it. Hi Deepak. What is the best way to use visualization to create the life that we want? In order to create the life you want, you have to practice love in action. Love without action is irrelevant. And action without love is meaningless. But when you practice love in action, the whole world supports you. In Eastern meditation traditions and yogic traditions, love in action is called karma yoga. Karma means action and yoga means connecting to the source. So the best way other than the formula I've given you, love in action, as the primary intention is also to know what are your unique gifts. So in meditation, ask yourself, what are my unique gifts? If I have all the time in the in the world, if I have all the money in the world, how would I spend my life serving everyone on this planet? If you're a musician, you love to play, play music or listen to music, that's your gift. You know, when you're practicing your gift and offering it to the world, you lose track of time. There's no such thing as work. Work becomes joy. So the key to fulfill your deepest desires, including open the world of abundance to you is to discover your unique talents and ask how can I use these talents to serve the world and then visualize that experience in your mind. Hi Mr. Chopra, it's Terry from Florida and my question for you is how can you use the power of meditation to help heal tragic loss? When we have tragic loss, the experience we have is grief. And there are many stages of grief. First, there's a feeling of victimization. Then there's anger, sometimes even hostility. Then there's frustration, helplessness, depression. And finally, there is acceptance. And once there is acceptance, then meaning occurs. Meaning and purpose arise out of acceptance and peace. In short, you have to go through the grieving process. There's no shortcut. And what you should do is actually bring back the best memories that you've had with the person who's no longer in your life and bring their awareness to your heart and cultivate their presence in your heart and then go through that process, let it go. And one day you will feel the grief has gone but the beautiful memories still remain and you feel the presence of the lost one in your body, in your mind and in your soul. Hi, I'm Jennifer. I have been meditating since I was eight and now I'm a meditation facilitator. I worry about people's mental health nowadays and I'm wondering how can I adapt my teachings to suit their needs better given the current state of this world? Depression, anxiety, even uh, suicidal ideation has become a major pandemic of our times. Uh, suicide is now the second most common cause of death among teenagers. Last year, more people committed suicide and died from suicide in Japan than from COVID-19. So we have a global mental health crisis at this moment, and we need to democratize mental well-being. I have a non-profit called neveralone.love that is democratizing help for those who are mentally depressed or challenged. And this is a global movement where people participate together 
in four areas, attention, affection, appreciation, and acceptance. And we want to create a global movement around this through our nonprofit, which once again is neveralone.love. But in your case, you could also start a small community where you meet online through Zoom or whatever, and you have group participation in these four areas. So the ultimate goal of meditation is self-realization to understand yourself as timeless being beyond space and time that outlives birth and death. You are not your self image. Society has conditioned us to sacrifice ourselves for our selfies and we've become a narcissistic society. As we go beyond our ego identity, we find our true identity, which is infinite possibilities, infinite creativity, infinite self-regulation, infinite evolution, infinite love, infinite synchronicity, and the source of insight, inspiration, higher cause and transcendence and loss of fear of death. This is the ultimate goal of meditation called self-realization and freedom from the conditioned mind. So this is the precious gift that meditation has offered over thousands of years in both East and West. And it's a promise that many people have seen to be true. Thanks for watching and check out Total Meditation on Audible. And please subscribe to the channel for more videos. You'll be inspired.